Okay, so school trips are something we need to talk about. School trips can be very stressful for children with misophonia, simply because as I'm sure you know, children with misophonia have a lot of difficulty in the car because, and, and there's a reason, there's no way to escape from the car. So imagine again, one's brain is misinterpreting sounds and, and visuals as harmful or toxic. What is the brain gonna tell the brain body to do? Flee, get away. And if you can't get away, then you go into that fight stance where adrenaline is, is pouring through you. And if you are trapped in a car, for example, there's no way, or there's not an easy way to escape. So it's hard to accommodate car trips, but there are some things you can do, you can talk to the, and I'm sorry, I meant like bus trips or what have you. You can talk to the teacher and just say, you know, we need accommodations to use headphones or earplugs. I, I prefer headphones because then there can be white noise or pink noise or brown noise played. And that can really cut a lot of sound on, on buses. So that's an easy accommodation to ask for. Um, and, and the other thing, you can always, if possible, arrange for alternative travel arrangements. Not always possible, but sometimes. And some trips are just hard to accommodate, you know, such as a trip to a movie. And I, I don't know how often these days people go take movie trips. We did when I was young, but now movies we could see at home, which is great. Um, but I think everybody in life faces things they can't do, whether it's because of misophonia, whether it's simply because there's something they don't, you know, like about a certain environment. People, for example, have migraine headaches and can't go into. So my point is, if your child feels left out, if you decide that it's better to you know, not have them go on the trip, that's okay. And if they feel left out, you know, consider something uh, as a substitute, like, you know, zoos are always nice, walking outside, looking at animals, 